man, beast, or both. What is the difference between the mythical werewolf and the strange man-wolf hybrid hundreds if not thousands have claimed to see throughout the world? And what would you do if you were cursed to become a ravenous man-eating monster every full moon? Let me know in the comments, and be sure to send me your scary stories at darkstories.org. Enjoy these allegedly true encounters with werewolves, dogmen, or lycanthropes. Now, let's begin. In the Woods, Werewolf from Zenith I grew up in a place that was a simple back road drive to the middle of nowhere, Missouri. I can't say it was boring despite it being surrounded by woods and swaths of nothing but tall grass and corn as it did hold dark things. As a kid at age six, I had no sense of self-preservation and it showed every time I went out to play in the woods at night, even when my uncle, who I visited often, told me not to. It was one of those times on an August night, sun beginning to set as it got closer to 8 p.m. I'd been playing with my younger sister and older cousins outside all day, but like any kid, I had a lot more energy left to burn. So when my uncle called us in, I pretended to tie my shoes until my sister and cousin ran inside. The moment that door closed, I bolted into the woods. I always felt so at home there, day or night. I never felt afraid or alone in those woods. So when I ran down the familiar dirt path, with wind and trees shifting as the night song, I was happy. I looked for mushrooms, dug for worms, climbed trees, entirely oblivious to anything but my own adventure in my head. I didn't notice the atmosphere shift until I was climbing down a tree out of breath. I noticed how silent it got. If the woods were anything, they were never silent. There would be frogs croaking, bugs buzzing, something, but there wasn't even wind anymore. Now at age six, I'd always been an adventure and horror enthusiast. So I instantly recognized that I was either in immediate danger or just being paranoid. I started walking back to the house, beginning to get anxious. The sounds of nature remained silent. This long silence was a warning. Get out. But I didn't run. I'm not sure why, but something told me not to run. I was almost relieved when I heard various snapping branches. I thought it was the herd of deer that sometimes came through the area. At this point, the sun had mostly set, giving me only enough light to see ten feet ahead when surrounded by trees. So when I looked behind me and saw a big shape, I didn't think anything of it, still thinking that it was just one of the deer, until... It began to stand. I froze, mostly from surprise and curiosity. I probably should have tried to get away immediately, but fear was overridden by my want to know just what I was looking at. I began to look it up and down, taking in its humanoid look, black fur with undertones of gray, up until I was looking into its eyes, a deep and bright blue. The head was mostly wolf, along with its arms that ended in hand-like appendages and large claws that could put a bear to shame. Since I was a kid, this thing looked absolutely massive to me, but if I were to scale it now, I'd say it was a little over seven feet. I was strangely content, looking at this thing that shouldn't have been real. I even had that bizarre thought to reach out and pet it. Soon I heard my uncle shouting my name, stomping through the bushes until he was visible. I looked at him, then the thing not too far from me, the creature was closer to me than my uncle was. My uncle froze, and I swear, he looked like he recognized it before fear overcame any other emotion on his face. Kai, come over here, hurry. 
he called to me. I frowned and looked back at the creature. It didn't seem hostile at all. It hadn't even moved from the moment I looked at it. After a while, it looked at my uncle, and it looked like it smiled, before disappearing off the path too fast for me to follow. Seconds later, I felt my uncle scoop me up from the ground and rushed us out of the woods. After we got to the house, I saw Dad waiting for us. I guess he came to get my sis and I. Dad saw the fear on his brother's face and immediately asked, What's wrong? See, Uncle wasn't a very expressive person. His face always stayed set blank. Uncle shook his head and set me down in front of my dad. Huge stray got close to Kai. Dad had a weirdly knowing look when he said that, which confused me. It stood up, I exclaimed. I think it's nice. Uncle sighed and started to go inside to get my sister, before pausing and commenting. This one's too much like you. Shouldn't play with strays, Kai. Dad smiled. I think it's a good thing. A howl made us look back to the woods, and I felt compelled to go back. I wanted to see it again, just to know I wasn't imagining anything. Dad must have known how I felt and said, Your uncle is right. Don't run off to play with strays. I stayed quiet after that, just getting into the car and waiting for my sister so we could go home. I don't know why I was frustrated then, about uncle and dad calling the thing a stray when it clearly wasn't an ordinary dog. They were hiding something from me. But I didn't say anything vowing to explore those woods again and again until I found it once more. I almost miss it, being unaware of the danger I was in with how reckless I was being. But I'm glad I know to be cautious now. This caution has saved my life more than a few times. In the words of my uncle, kids looking for adventure, don't play with strays. The World's Fastest Cryptid Canine From Rorik I'm sharing this sighting because I don't know what I saw, but it was unlike anything else I've ever encountered. The animal I saw was a canine of some sort, but I've never seen an animal run like this, and that's saying something, as I used to work for a guy who raised and raced greyhounds. Heck, even my hometown is famous for being the hometown of Lady Greyhound, for whom the Greyhound bus line gets its name. I've grown up with yellow labs and I've seen countless foxes and coyotes in both the wild and in more urban areas here in Kansas, so I know what the indigenous as well as typical pet canines of the area look like, and how they behave. This animal was unlike anything else I'd ever seen. This sighting happened in broad daylight in early April in central Kansas, as I was driving south along Highway 81 in Ottawa County. I was driving south towards I-70 as I was on my way to Colorado for a business conference, when I noticed an animal running fast on one of the unpaved county roads that intersects the highway. The highway has four lanes, two for southbound travel and two for northbound, so it's pretty broad. The highway wasn't particularly busy, but there were other vehicles on the road. There was a white pickup heading north that I spotted probably a quarter of a mile away. Of course, when two vehicles are driving 70 plus miles per hour, they'll meet and pass each other quite quickly. I bring this up because the thing I saw running made its way from the west side of the county road across all four lanes of the highway and onto the east side of the highway before the white pickup truck and I passed one another. Perhaps this wouldn't be too notable if the four lanes of the highway were the furthest distance crossed by this creature. However, when I first spotted the animal running east along the dirt road, it was a minimum of 50 meters away from the highway, and I saw it clear another 50 meters or more on the other side of the highway before I passed out of sight of this animal. In all, I'd say the sighting lasted four or five seconds, 
and this thing was running the whole time. It ran like a greyhound, though it was much larger than any greyhound. Its head was much larger than any greyhounds could be too, and its body was stout yet sleek. Overall, this animal was larger. Honestly, it was more like one of the dire wolves from the Game of Thrones series, though the fur was not quite as long. It was shorter at the shoulder than a white-tailed deer, but larger than any greyhound, coyote, or farm dog I've ever seen. Another thing that I found odd about this sighting is that I could not see any prey that this canine could have been chasing. I can't imagine anything outrunning this animal anyway, but still, no rabbit or any other small animal led this animal in its pursuit. Other than its size and its speed, I cannot attribute any supernatural qualities to it. I did not feel threatened by the creature. But if I had been on a bike or an ATV, this thing could have easily pounced and knocked me on the road, if it had wanted to. Such was its speed, power, and size. In addition to wondering what the creature was, I've often wondered why it was running so fast. Since I couldn't see any prey that it was chasing, I wonder why it was running as fast as it was, how long it had been running before I spotted it, and how far it continued to run before stopping wherever its endpoint came to be. I do not believe this was a gray wolf as they've been extinct in Kansas since the early 1900s, and it was far too large to be a coyote. For reference, a large coyote would be 40 pounds or more, and this animal appeared to be well in excess of 100 pounds. I have a 75 pound yellow lab, and this animal was much larger than she is. Anyway, I don't know what this thing was. I hesitate to call it a cryptid, but it was unlike anything I've ever seen. Either someone is breeding super large and extremely fast farm dogs, or there is an aberrant form traipsing around central Kansas challenging mammalian land speed records. Dragged out by a werewolf in Quebec. From Fatality 611. I was camping with the Cadet de la Marine Royale in Quebec, Canada. That is, the Royal Canadian Sea Cadets. I don't remember where exactly for the city. It was 13 years ago when I was 11 or 12. I went camping in a tent alone because I wasn't able to properly communicate with people at the time without hurting them with words. So there I was sleeping in an army-like tent alone with the roof not even connected to the floor, which created an open space to the outside. It was a summer morning around 6 a.m. I suddenly felt a terrible cold come over me. I thought I was in my sleeping bag. I opened my eyes and I realized first I was outside in broad daylight somehow. And secondly, in front of me was standing this huge black thing about six or seven feet away. It was standing at an impressive 1.5 meters in height. I don't remember if it was on two or four legs. This encounter lasted less than five seconds because I thought I was dreaming. I closed my eyes ignoring completely the red flag and fell back to sleep. I woke up a few hours later at the same spot, but that black creature or thing was gone. Now to be sure I wasn't dreaming, I finally got up and looked around me to see that I had been dragged out of my tent a few feet away. I crawled back into my tent and somehow fell asleep for the last time. I asked the person that was in the same tent acting as a watcher because of my bad attitude if he noticed that I was gone. He replied that he pushed me to the side of the tent, but nothing else. After hearing this, it confirms to me that these things might exist for real, and one had dragged me out of my tent for some purpose. I don't have any sleeping problems, and strangely enough, I didn't notice any kind of cut or slash or bite on my body. What was it going to do with me, I wonder? The Worst Birthday From Metalhead 1 
Let me preface this by saying that before this traumatic event, I've only ever heard of the Bigfoot and the Wendigo. And though I found them very intriguing, to be honest, I wasn't sure if I believed in them, until one fateful night in July 2019. It was the eve of my 30th birthday party, and I had been putting up with a lot of stress the weeks before, so I figured I'd go camping for the night and fish in the morning. Sounded like a good birthday to me. I decided I'd go to Frederick Forest here in Maryland. After all, it's a very beautiful place, and it's 30 minutes away from the metropolitan city I live in. I really just needed a day to myself. So I made sure I had my provisions, my fishing pole and tent, and I set out to a spot I'd stayed at before, not too far from the main road, if crap ever hit the fan. Once there, after I finally get my tent set up, I get a little fire going. By then, I'd say it's about 8.30 p.m. The sun had already set, so I get out my Bluetooth speaker and jam to some good old Metallica, just enjoying the sounds of the cackling fire and the beautiful sounds of nature as well. I thought to myself, tomorrow's going to be awesome. An hour of jamming later, I turn my Bluetooth off, so as to not attract any predators or crazies, and went to sleep. Now, I've never had such a rude awakening in my life, but at the same time, it was very startling. I woke up to a very loud and powerful howl. If I didn't know any better, I'd say a roar as well, coming from no further than 50 feet from my tent. Not gonna lie, I was shaken up, it was about 3 a.m. With my hand shaking, I grabbed my flashlight to check it out. I crawl out of my tent, trying to stay completely quiet. Even holding my breath, I scanned the tree line, trying to find the source. It didn't take long for me to find it. I found a pair of canine eyes resting upon the silhouette of a man. They were staring at me. I thought... Dude, you're dreaming. Then, as if the thing had heard my thought, it focused its gaze on me. I was literally in such fear in my head, I was thinking, get the flashlight off of it, and run. But it felt as if I had cement shoes on. I was in shock, to say the least. So this thing steps closer, and I see all of it now. It stood at about six feet or seven feet tall, with jet black hair, a head similar to a German shepherd if I had to guess, and a muscular torso, and claws that had to be three inches long. Its back legs were inverted. It started sniffing at me, then circling me, and all I could think to myself was, this is it, this is how it ends. It then gave me a growl, followed by another howl, as if to say, leave. Then, in a couple of bounds, it was gone. I don't think I ever moved that fast to do anything in my life, as I packed up all my belongings and shoved them in my car, speeding out of there. Truth be told, I even got a speeding ticket along the way home. I know now there are things out there, no matter how much you try, you just can't explain them. And that's what happened to me that night. I'm thankful that that thing spared me. And until now, I've never told anyone who would believe me. But hey, it was some birthday, huh? Werewolf in Oregon From Edward Cullen Alpha Wolf It was about a year ago. I remember going on vacation in Oregon. After a long season of school, my mom said we should take a trip. We packed our things the night before, ready to just get in the car and leave. The next morning, we woke up at 6 a.m., got in the car, and left. It took us about eight hours to get there. When we pulled up to our hotel, we got to our room and brought all our stuff in and got settled down. I always preferred to sleep by the window, so I got the bed with the window, of course. 
We went out that day and visited some aquariums and stuff. When we got back home, we were very tired, so we went straight to bed. Except for me, I stayed up and watched Twilight and Harry Potter. At one point, I looked out the window into the forest nearby, where the deer and elk roam. I figured there were probably wolves out there too, so I kept watching out the window while the movie played in the background. And soon I saw something I never thought I would see. Two glowing green eyes peered into my window from down there. I stood as still as I could, not wanting to draw attention to myself. Whatever those eyes belonged to, it had a long snout tipped with a cold, wet nose that glimmered in the moonlight. It had ears folded back against its head and muscular arms with hands like a human. I blinked to make sure I was not seeing things. The creature lifted its head back and howled as if it was telling me something. Then it disappeared into the dark forest. I closed the curtains, then jumped in bed, and I thought about it. But maybe a little unnerved. I lay in bed, thinking about that wolf-like human thing. That's why we hardly ever go back there anymore. Meeting a Not Hungry Werewolf from Moon and Anime Life I live in Middle Europe. It was the summer of 2020. It was kind of cold for an evening in the summer in our parts, and I was hanging out outside with my two friends and my dog. We were bored, so we decided to go camping in the forest. As the evening approached when we would be setting up camp, my dog was not acting himself. He wasn't running around as usual. Instead, he looked scared, looking all around us, not going more than a few meters away from us. Ultimately, though, we ignored the strange behavior. We set up our tents and made a fire. I remember this well. I looked at my phone at one point and it was 6.43 p.m. We were still able to see the sun hadn't gone all the way down yet. My friend went for some sticks for our sausages. I called my dog over, but he didn't come. It was then I realized my dog had gone missing. I thought that maybe he saw some fox, so he went after it. Fifteen minutes later, my friends come back with sticks and with my dog, but my dog looks even more terrified than before. I do my best to calm him down. One of my friends told us that he found my dog staring into the woods. They asked if that was unusual, and I replied that it was kind of strange for him. Later, when it was almost dark, we reinvigorated the fire and began to roast our sausages. We were sharing different stories from our lives, when suddenly my dog began to bark. We had no idea why or what was going on. At the time, I was the only one who believed in vampires and werewolves of the three of us. I looked up at the sky. It was clear, and there was a full moon above. I told my friends that it might be a werewolf, but they laughed at what I said. Finally, my dog calmed down, so we continued to talk, but I already had a bad feeling about things. I looked at my phone again, 11.15 p.m. I told my friends that we should go to bed. We didn't put out the flame because we were still kind of creeped out. We all went to bed, but I couldn't fall asleep. My dog started to bark again. It was irritating, and my friends got mad. We went out of our tents to check out everything, and what we saw I'll never forget. The fire was beginning to dwindle down, so it was harder to see the creature, but as we heard a growl, my friend said that it's a wolf. But after a moment, I noticed something. This wolf had a huge body, maybe six feet tall on two smaller hairy legs with a tail, a huge chest, and long two front legs, which had large claws. I tried to not look at its face, but when I did, 
I saw something like a wolf face with golden yellow glowing eyes. That's what I was able to make out from the fire. We were terrified, trying not to move, and my dog was right next to me, but he wasn't barking anymore. Then I couldn't help but speak. It's a werewolf. The creature took a step when I said that. I think it hurt me. My friends gathered next to me. We were staring at the thing for a few more minutes, and it was looking at us, just observing us. None of us moved, until we heard a crack of old wood or something a few meters from us. We turned to look there, as did the werewolf. Then I watched it run after the sound, taking off into the woods. I was in shock. We all were. We didn't really know what just happened. We all climbed into one tent because we were so scared. When I looked at my phone again, it was 4.18 a.m. I was kind of mad at myself that I didn't look at my phone when I went out of the tent before I saw what I saw. We couldn't sleep, and by 6 a.m. we packed our tents and everything, and we quickly went back home. We told our story to a few hunters, but they started laughing at us. A week later, one of them came back to us and told us that we might be right. I'll never forget how scared he looked. After that, we never discussed it again. But from that time on, we weren't the only one who saw this werewolf. I'm still wondering, why didn't it kill us? Why was it just standing in front of us? I always see it in my dreams, and when it's the full moon, I can hear some howling coming from the woods. A few weeks ago, we went back to the same place. We were there all night, but nothing happened. I decided in the early morning when we were leaving to howl, just to see what happened. A few seconds later, something howled back. It was the creature. Why am I sure that it was that creature? Because that thing was not from our forest. There are no wolves here. After hearing that, we ran off, and were not planning to go back again. Dogman in Salado Creek, San Antonio, Texas From Tex Santos I'm 20 years old now, but even as a kid, I still knew not to mess with the cryptic or supernatural. I was hanging out with a friend of mine. We were trying to catch an Uber, but there weren't any drivers nearby. So I told my friend, I'll just walk home. No worries. He at least offered me a knife for protection, but I declined. I walked from the military drive to a house my high school friend used to live in. I made my way to the bridge at Salado Creek. I kept hearing this strange cracking sound. It reminded me more of a bone breaking, but I told myself it was just a stick or something. I looked in the direction of the noise, and I was terrified to see some sort of large dog or wolf eating a wild hog. Unfortunately for me, I was downwind of the creature. My scent carried to it, and when it smelled me, it looked up and looked right at me, and it appeared extremely angry. I nearly messed myself. I must have been so pale in the face, like a ghost. I turned and carried on, ignoring it, hoping that it knew I was no concern to it. As I approached one of the nearby lights, I heard the brush move near me. In a panic, I looked over, and out of the bush came this hairy-looking arm of a brown color. Then I began to run, hoping that the lights would protect me, that maybe it was wary of the lights. But this was a silly thought, as it gave chase. I was able to make it back home okay. It didn't seem to want to attack, rather, it followed me and watched as if it was curious. As soon as I made it into my bed, 
I remembered a friend's uncle once saying that dogman encounters are quite common in Texas. 